Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I want to talk a bit about the draw tool settings and how I'm going to change those in order to create this style of drawing. So you can see that I've got the file that I ended the last video with, which has all my reference images on planes. So I'm going to scroll into this top one. So for this video, I mainly want to focus on the line work that you see in this example. So while the line is wavy, I'll discuss that in the next video when I discuss the noise modifier for Blender Grease Pencil. In this video, I mainly want to focus on the color and the weight and the opacity. So you can see this line work is consistently the same color and it's consistently the same weight. It doesn't vary. So I want to scroll out and go to the canvas. Currently I've blended its default settings, so you should be seeing the same things I see. So I'm going to draw a line and we'll see what that looks like. So you can see the line starts very light. It gets darker as it goes, then it lightens again. In addition to that, it's thinner at the beginning, wider in the middle, and thinner at the end. I'll draw another one to demonstrate. Up at the top, you'll see next to the green block, we have radius and strength. And those are controlling those settings. So if I turn off this little icon next to the radius and draw again, you can see that my pencil stroke is the same throughout. Now it still has a gradient on the beginning, but the line width is the same. So to control that, you can turn that pin pressure icon off, which is what that is. And then you can manually control it by changing the radius up there. You can also control the radius by using your bracket tools to increase or decrease the size of that. So now again, you can see that the line is getting lighter and then darker and then lighter again. So that's controlled by the strength setting, which is right next to the radius. You can see currently we have it at 0.6. So if I click in there and slide it to one, you can see it gets much darker, but I'm still getting the gradient based on my pin pressure. So to change that, you can just turn off the pin pressure icon and now it's the same. Hey, this is future me interrupting this video with some late breaking news. I want to mention when I'm talking about the radius and the strength that you can also control that with shortcut keys. So here I have my pen. You can see how that looks. If I hit F on my keyboard with the pen not touching the tablet, and then I drag the pen to the left or the right, I can increase my radius. So I'll stop it there, press it. You can see that's bigger. Hit F again, lower it, press the screen and then I have a smaller one. If you hit Shift F and then drag, you can increase or decrease the strength. And you can see the color changing when I do that. So I'm gonna click on the screen. You see it's lighter. If I hit Shift F again, drag to the top, click on the screen, darker. So I just wanna make you aware of those keyboard shortcuts and how to control the radius and strength with those. Now back to the video. Okay, so I wanna undo all this. And you can see my settings stayed the same. So the next thing I want to note is if I draw this line and I go to edit mode and I would go up here to the left and change this to points mode and select this, you can see we have quite a bit of points, but they're kind of spaced unevenly and not consistent. So I want to go back to draw mode and under stroke, you see post processing is checked. And what this is, is Blender is trying to eliminate as many points as possible while still giving you the same stroke you drew, which is fine because the more points you have, the more memory intensive the file is. However, if I go to the erase tool and I currently have erase soft and you can see how that works, but for the type of artwork I'll be doing, I don't really want that taper on the end. You know, I don't want that gradient, the opacity. I want it to be an even cut. So if I go to the hard eraser, you can see that still does it, but then it gives me this weird little tail sometimes and it still has the opacity. If I go to the points eraser, I'm erasing by the points, which is fine, but you see how it jumped just then? Let me undo that. Now watch when it gets to a point and jumps. Like there. That's because there is a large space between points and that's because the post-processing is enabled. So I'm gonna click undo to bring back our original stroke. Now I'm gonna go to stroke and uncheck post-processing. Now I'm gonna draw another line. Now I'm gonna go to edit mode and with point selected, I wanna select all of these. Now you can see our line is much denser. 
And again, that is increasing the number of points you have. But when I go to erase it, it's a lot smoother and it'll give me closer to the erasing functionality that I want. So if I click on eraser and I make sure eraser points is selected because I want to erase the points because I want to erase cleanly. Now you can see it's a much more gradual erasing process, which is more what I want. So again, you are adding more points, but I think this is a much better way to use the eraser tool for this type of artwork. If you're doing more traditional type of artwork where you want that kind of opacity or gradient control, I think that works great. But for this one, where the lines are consistently in the same color and the same weight, I think this works best. So I'm gonna go back to the draw tool. So you can see I don't have anything checked here in this one. Uh, you could do stabilized stroke if you wanted, but for my drawing, I'm gonna turn off stabilized stroke because in the reference images, it's already kind of jittery and I'm gonna to add to that with the noise modifier, which I'll show in a later video. So I really don't need this any smoother than it already is. So if you're careful when you draw, it's not really terribly jittery to start with. So the last thing I want to do is talk about my material for the stroke color. So currently it's a solid black. So in my properties menu on the right, if I click on materials, which you can see right here, these are the stroke materials I currently have available. So solid strokes, what I've been using, if I click on squares strokes and I draw, you can see that has a square look. If I scroll in, you can really see how that's made up of little squares. Solid fill allows us to create a closed object. And then dot strokes is made up of little dots, which you really can't see even if I scroll in. So for this file, I just want to start out with one material and then I'll add those as I need them. So to delete these, I want to click on dots stroke and hit this minus button. I want to do the same to solid fill. And you can see as I delete those, what's existing on the canvas is changing to the next one up. So where we once had a closed object, it's now a red squares stroke. So I'm going to delete that one too. So everything is reverted to the solid stroke. I'm going to double click on that and change the name to background stroke because this will be what I'll be using moving forward for my background line work. Okay, now if I want to lighten this material up just a little bit, if I go down here, you can see the properties of that material. And we currently have stroke selected and fill is not. And that's what we want. So if I click on the base color, I can bring that up just a little bit to kind of convert a little bit to gray. And you can see all the line work is changing to that color, which is one thing I really like about Grace Pencil is being able to control existing line work with one material. So like if I go up, you can see it's changing. And if I go to red, so I'm gonna go back to white, and then I'll bring that down. And I don't want it like completely black, but I want it too light. So I'll choose that about right there. So if you look at the RGB colors, it's 0 0.025, 0 0.025, 0 0.025, 0 0.025 with an alpha of one. So this will be the stroke that I use as I work on the background. I may reduce the radius a bit, which again, you can do up here at the top or with your bracket buttons. And then I'll probably go back to 20. Yeah, I think 20 will be good. And in the next video, I'll talk about how to make the line work a little more jittery like it is in the original reference images. In the video after that, I'll talk about using the guides function of Blender Grease Pencil to draw in one point perspective. And if I scroll over here, you can see one point perspective is what's being used in my reference image. So all the line work is coming down to the point about Dean's waist in Supernatural. And then we have lines across. So that is definitely one point perspective because everything's ending at that one point. So in the video after the perspective video, I'll talk about layers and colors and we'll start drawing this and figure out the best process for creating this type of cartoon background within Blender Grease Pencil. Hope you found this video helpful. If so, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.